This video contains the inspection procedures for the 500 gallon fuel blivets. As with any inspection, you're always going to begin by simplifying your form. First, write ALS at the top right corner of your form. Next, circle block 3 and 5. Now carry over any X's that the rigger has already placed on the form into your column as the inspector. Finally, you will fill out all of block 12, however you will not apply your signature. Once you have completed simplifying your form, go back up to the top right where you wrote ALS and ask yourself these three questions. A stands for aircraft. Ask yourself, is block 5 capable of lifting block 3? L stands for load or is my load too heavy for my equipment? In which case L is only going to apply when dealing with the A22 cargo bag or the cargo nets. S stands for sling sets. Ask yourself, is block 3 too heavy for the sling set or sling legs in front of you? After verifying ALS, Continue your inspection starting with the apex fitting. Ensure that the apex is set up for the appropriate aircraft, that the castellated nuts crown portion is facing out, and that there is a cotter pin present. Incorporate an apex spacer if the aircraft requires it. Next, ensure that the sling legs are in the correct sequence. Trace and verify that sling legs 1 and 2 are routed free and clear to the front of the load. And that sling legs 3 and 4 are routed free and clear to the rear of the load. Now, you will move on to inspecting the first three of five breakaway ties. Inspect the first breakaway tie and verify that it is the proper material, which is type 1 quarter inch cotton webbing. Ensure that it is not double wrapped and that it encompasses all four sling legs. When inspecting the second breakaway tie, once again, ensure that it is the proper material that it is routed one time and one time only, and it encompasses all four sling legs. For the third breakaway tie, be sure to move sling legs three and four out of the way to get a good visual of what you're inspecting. Check for proper material and that it is routed only one time through both potted eyes of sling legs one and two. After you've inspected the first three breakaway ties, move to the first grab hook assembly on the front right side of the load. Ensure that the grab hook has been drilled with a 13 64ths bit, replacing any roll pins with a dome or self-locking nut. Next, verify that there is a snap ring present. And ensure that the grab hook is not inverted. Check the keeper for proper spring tension. And finally, verify a link count of 3 if you're working with a 10k sling set or a link count of 5 if you're working with a 25k sling set. Double check the routing of the chain, ensuring that it is routed only one time and one time only through the lifting provision in this case, an anchor shackle. Move on to inspecting both of your anchor shackles, verifying that they both have cotter pins present. Only one anchor shackle is required. However, if there are two anchor shackles present, they both require cotter pins in place. Next, you will verify that the fuel port is either taped with two inch pressure sensitive tape or capped, one or the other, never both. However, on some of the older style fuel blivets, there is only one fuel port. In this case, it is on the opposite side. With no fuel port present, 
we are ready to move on. On our way to the rear right side fuel blivet, we will inspect our fourth breakaway tie. It should be present directly between our two fuel blivets. And once again, we are checking for proper material, that it is not double wrapped, and that it encompasses both sling legs three and four. After we have inspected our fourth breakaway tie, we will inspect the rear right fuel blivets grab hook assembly in the same manner we did the first. Dome nut and snap ring present, spring tension on the keeper, link count of three and grab hook not inverted. Chain is routed one time and one time only through the anchor shackle. Cotter pin, cotter pin, and now that we have a fuel port present, verify that it is taped with two inch pressure sensitive tape or capped, one or the other, never both. Once we have completely inspected the right side of the load, we will continue to move counterclockwise behind the load and inspect our fifth and final breakaway tie, verifying that it is the proper material and that it is routed one time and one time only through both potted eyes of sling legs three and four. Finally, we will finish our inspection of the left side of the load in the same manner that we conducted the right side of the load. Dome nut, snap ring, spring tension, link count of three, grab hook not inverted, chain routed one time and one time only through the anchor shackle, cotter pin, cotter pin, no fuel port, dome nut, snap ring, spring tension, link count of three, grab hook not inverted, chain routed only one time through the anchor shackle, cotter pin, cotter pin, and finally fuel port taped with two inch pressure sensitive tape or capped. This concludes the inspection procedures for the 500 gallon fuel blivets. Two final takeaways from this video are, one, as mentioned before, in the event you have older fuel blivets with only one fuel port, in order for them to be correctly positioned, depicted in this clip, the fuel ports on the front and rear blivet must be alternating. However, all newer fuel blivets have fuel ports on both sides. And two, the one inch tubular nylon material we have connecting our fuel blivets is not intended for rigging procedures and is for training purposes only. We teach our students that this material is invisible and it allows us to tie our grab hooks in place, eliminating the need for rehab between student inspections.